Hello and welcome to Leroy Gaming, where today we continue our deep dive look at Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous with a focus in this video on looking at all the deity as well as domain options that you will have in the game. Now, this is going to be the most prominently featured with the cleric class, but um, situationally, they will also play roles in other classes. They will have more limited options, but I will be using the cleric class as an option just to make it a little easier. So do note, some of these will be uh, shown in other classes, like Druid, for example, and Paladin, to a certain extent, uh, as well as others. But we will be using this cleric as an example. This is an extensive dive on these two elements. If you want to see a deep dive on the cleric class itself you can check out my deep dive video that i recently posted focusing on clerics and druids with that let's go ahead and get started so we're gonna go to the deity menu now this is very in-depth i will be leaving um timestamps in the description below because i will be looking at every single deity reading every description and looking at the domains and favorite weapons Afterwards, we will take a look at the actual domains that are associated with them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with Abadar. Now you'll notice they all have alignment requirements. So lawful good, lawful neutral, neutral and lawful evil here. Abadar, the god of cities, law, merchants and wealth, also called the god of walls and ditches. In the eastern dragon empires is known to be a patient de deity maintaining a strong neutral stance in his actions he sets force to expand civilization and order amongst the peoples of Golarion. With this you get access to the domain of earth, law, nobility, protection and travel and the favorite weapon is the light crossbow. Next option is Asmodeus, alignment of lawful neutral, lawful evil and neutral evil. Asmodeus also known as the king of hell Master of Witches and Pride of Law, or Prince of Law, is the most powerful of the nine archdevils that inhabit Hell, and the only one of Hell's rulers to claim full divinity. It was he who is credited with the penning the contract of creation within which his followers believe is hidden the means of their patron's eventual rise to supremacy, quite literally, the devil. Domains are evil, fire, law, magic, and trickery, and favorite weapon is the mace. Next, we have Calistria. Uh, alignments are chaotic neutral, neutral, chaotic neutral, and chaotic evil. Calistra, also known as the savored sting, and the unquenchable fire, is the goddess of lust and revenge, who takes on many faces and guises. She is held in especially high regards by elves who often identify over mer mercurial moods and changeable nature. A fondness for wasps has earned, earned this vengeful deity the title of the Savored Sting. Such creatures live on after harming their enemies, a trait Callistra's followers hope to emulate when pursuing their goals. The domains are that of chaos, charm, knowledge, luck, and trickery, and a favored weapon is the rapier. Next is Caden Kalen. The alignments are neutral good, chaotic good, and chaotic neutral. Caden Kalen, the god of alcohol, bravery, and freedom, is one of the ascended, those mortals who achieved godhood by passing the test of the Star Stone. Because legend tells that he passed the test while intoxicated, he's also known as the lucky drunk, the drunken hero, or the accidental god. Domains are that of chaos, charm, good strength and travel and the favored weapon is the rapier desna has the alignment of neutral good chaotic good and chaotic neutral desna also known as the great dreamer lady luck and mother moon the goddess of dreams luck stars and travelers is among the most ancient of deities while her peers burdened themselves with the task of creating galarian she spent her time building the heavens she knew that there would be plenty of time for her and her followers to explore the many wonders of the world later. 
She's changed little since those earlier days, and she and her followers delight in exploring the world. Her domains are of chaos, good, liberation, luck, and travel, and her favorite weapon is the star knife. Ne next is Arastil, uh, alignment of lawful good, neutral good, and lawful neutral. Ara Arastil, also known as Old Deadeye and the Stag God, is one of the oldest human gods still worshipped in the inner sea region and is concerned with family, farming, hunting, and trade. During the age of creation, Rastro was among the gods who battled Rov Ravagug. <clears throat> Ravagug when he sought to destroy Golarion. They were eventually able to contain him in the dead vault at the planet's core. His religion dates back to before the Age of Darkness, when small farming communities of hunter-gatherers pray to him for bountiful harvests and successful hunts. Legends claim it was Old Deadeye himself who crafted the first bow and gifted it to humans to overcome the challenge of the world. Even as the accomplishments of civilization mount, Arastril continues to embrace and represent the simple pleasures life has to offer. His domains are that of the animal, community, good, law, plant, and his favorite weapon is the longbow. The next god is Gorum. He is chaotic good, neutral, chaotic neutral, and chaotic evil compatible. Gorum, also known as our lord in iron, is a god of battle above all other pursuits. It is said that he would rust away into nothingness if there was ever a time with no more conflict to be found. His faithfuls his faithful believe he is present in every iron weapon of war that is forged. His domains are that of chaos, destruction, glory, strength, and war. His favorite weapon is greatsword. Next is Gauzray, with alignments of neutral good, lawful neutral, neutral, chaotic neutral, and neutral evil. Gauzran is a dualistic deity of nature, a god of the storm, and sky and also a goddess of the wave and surf. Born of the ocean's fury and the wind's wrath, Gazra is a fickle deity. Domains are air, animal, plant, water, and weather. Favored weapon is trident. Next is Gin Girona. Alignments of chaotic neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Goddess Girona is also known as the angry hag. And for good reason, she's not a popular deity as many fear her and her clergy, which is entirely female. These are usually the victims of the unforgiving and closed-minded, the outcasts of society, disfigured prostitutes, wives caught in adultery, or pregnant teenagers disavowed by their parents. Priestesses are renowned for their ability to foster hatred and turn friend against friend. Our priestesses are also known to swap young babies for hideous monsters or as creatures birthed from their own womb. Domains are chaos, destruction, evil, and madness. And the favorite weapon is the dagger. Ayomede is an alignment of lawful good, neutral good, and lawful neutral. Ayomede, also known as the Inheritor, Light of the Sword, and Lady of Valor, is the goddess of righteous valor, justice, and honor. Having served as Eridan's herald, she inherited many of the last Aslanti's followers upon her death, and continues to espouse the ideas of honor and righteousness in the defense of good and the battle against evil. Her domains are that of glory, good, law, sun, and war, and a favored weapon is the longsword. Irori has the alignments of lawful good, lawful neutral, Neutral and Lawful Evil Arori, also known as Master of Masters, the Enlightened One, and the Perfect Human, is the God of Enlightenment, Self-Perfection, Knowledge, Healing, and Inner Strength. His followers claim that he was once a mortal who achieved absolute physical and mental perfection and thus attained divinity of his own volition. He is one of the core gods, if not the most powerful deity, of the Vudrani Pantheon, but he has an increasing following in the NRC region as well. His domains are healing, knowledge, law, rune, and strength. Favorite weapons is unarmed strike. Next is Lamashtu, 
Alignment of chaotic neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Lamashtu is the mother and pat patroness of many mishappen and malformed creatures that crawl, slither, or flap on above or below the surface of Galarian. Her unholy symbol is a three-eyed jackal head, which may be represented in many ways, and her sacred animal is the jackal. Which is also prominently featured in Pathfinder Kingmaker, if you did play the previous entry in the series. Her domains are chaos, evil, madness, strength, trickery. Favorite weapons are the falchion and the kukri. Next we have Nethys, alignments of neutral good, lawful neutral, neutral, chaotic neutral, and neutral evil. Nethys, also known as the all seeing eye, is a Garudi god who holds knowledge and magic above all things. He gained enough power to witness all things, and this, bold, this both fueled his divinity and shattered his mind. He's a god of magic, torn between destroying the world with one hand and saving it with the other. His domains are destruction, knowledge, magic, protection, and rune. Favorite weapon is the quarterstaff. Next we have Norgobur. Alignments of neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Norgobar is known as the once mortal god of thievery and assassination, as well as a keeper of secrets. He is called the Reaper of the Reputation by some, but he has more insidious titles among worshippers who venture his other three aspects Blackfingers, Father Skinsaw, and the Grey Master. He remains an enigma to most, and his true motivations are unknown. Many of his own followers remain ignorant of his plans and designs. Norgobur is the only evil god amongst the Ascended. His domains are charm, death, evil, knowledge, and trickery. His favorite weapon is a short sword. Next we have Pharasma, alignments of neutral good, lawful neutral, neutral, chaotic neutral, and neutral evil. The Lady of Graves, Mother of Souls, Grey Lady. Pharasma is the goddess of birth, death, and prophecy. She shepherds Galarian's recently departed souls to their final reward. Upon death, souls migrate via River of Souls to Pharasma's boneyard in the outer sphere, which sits atop an impossibly tall spire that pierces the astral plane. She is amongst the most ancient deities in the multiverse, but keeps her knowledge of her fate fate of all souls closely guarded. So this the, is the Hades equivalent, we would say. Uh, domains are of death, healing, knowledge, repose, and water. Favorite weapon is the dagger. Next we have Rovagug. Alignments of chaotic neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. In prison the, since the age of creation, the god Rovagug, also known as the rough beast, the great destroyer, and the world breaker, seeks only to destroy creation and the other gods believed to be imprisoned in a state of torpor somewhere deep within Galarian, as in increasingly restless stirrings are taken by many to be the cause of volcanic activity and earthquakes. His worshippers are known for embodying the god's dominion over destruction, disaster, and wrath. His domain is that of chaos, destruction, evil, war, and weather. Favorite weapon is the Great Axe. Next we have Sar Saran Ray, alignment of lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, and neutral. Known to her faithful as Dawnflower, the healing light, and the everlight. Saran Ray is a goddess who teaches temper temperance and patience in all things. Compassion and peace are her greatest virtue. If enemies of the faith can be redeemed, they should be. Worship of this goddess of healing, honesty, redemption, and the sun began far to the east of the inner sea, in the vast Padishah Empire of Kalesh. But her worshippers can now be found throughout the world. Her domains are that of fire, glory, good, healing, and the sun. Favorite weapon is the scimitar. Next god is Shalin. Uh, alignment is lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, and neutral. Shalin, also known as the Eternal Rose, the Eternal Maiden, and the Incorruptible, is the goddess of art, beauty, love, and music, and a half-sister of Zon Kuthon. 
Shalin focuses just as much attention on internal beauty as external. As aspects of her role as a goddess of beauty, Shalin also promotes the creation of art and a composing and performance of music. Clerics of Shalin frequency are artists themselves. As the goddess of love, Shalin encourages the prol proliferation of that feeling in all forms. She is not the goddess of sexuality, lust, or fertility, and makes a very clear distinction between love and sexuality, although she does not in any way discourage erotic love. The few paladins who worship her practice, practice courtly love. Her domains are air, charm, good, luck, protection. Favorite weapon is the glaive. The next god is Torag, with an alignment of lawful good, neutral good, and lawful neutral. Torag, also known as the father of creation, is a stoic and serious dwarven god of the forge, protection and strategy, who values honor, planning, and well-made steel. He's an often distant deity, lending magical power to his clerics by leaving his followers to make their own way through life knowing that this will make them strong and determined. His domains are of artifice, earth, good, law, and protection. Favorite weapon is the Warhammer. Next god is Urgarthau, Thoa. Uh, alignments of neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Urgarthoa, also known as the Pallid Prince, and Lady Despair is the goddess of physical excess. Oh, sorry, the pallid princess, not prince. Uh, the goddess of physical excess, disease, and undead is mostly worshipped by dark necromancers, the undead, and those wishing to become undead. Sometimes those who live gluttonous lifestyles make supplication to her as do those suffering from a serious illness. Her faithful believe she was the first creature of uh, creature to defy phrasma and return unnaturally from the boneyard and break free from the cycle of souls. Her domains are that of death, evil, magic, strength, and war, and her favorite weapon is the scythe. Next, next is Zon Ton, alignment of lawful neutral, lawful evil, and neutral evil. The deity Zon Kuthon, also known as the Midnight Lord, the Dark Prince, and the Prince of Pain, god of darkness, envy, loss, and pain, possesses one of the most twisted and evil minds in the great beyond. His position as god of pain is well earned, and he has been the root of countless torturers, tortures, murders, and worse throughout time. He was once a benevolent demigod named Dobara, but he was corrupted when he traveled to the to the far dark places between the plains and returned in his current form. His half sister, Shelin, still holds out hope that she can redeem him. Though the Lord of Shadows shows no sign of remorse or compassion. His domains are that of darkness, death, destruction, evil, and law. His favorite weapon is the flail. The next god is Arishka, Arishagal. Alignments of chaotic neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. The demon lord of portals and riddles, Arishkagal, appears as a faceless, six-legged female sphinx with midnight blue fur and pale flesh. She torments her worshippers and her prisoners alike with unfair riddles until they go mad and renounce their very reality of their existence. Whispers hold that her true face is too hideous for even the abyss to bear, but that for brief moments she can reveal it to strike viewers insane or dead. Her domains are that of air, chaos, evil, and trickery, and her favorite weapon is a sickle. The next god is Baphomet, alignments of chaotic neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Baphomet, demon lord of beasts, mazes, and minotaurs, ruler over a abyssal realm known as the Ivory Labyrinth, a favorite consort of Lamash II. He was created by her as the first minotaur to lead her creations in a mortal wound. World. Baphomet raided hell to steal Asmodeus's ruby rod. Unfortunately for him, he was caught, and Lamash too denied relations to him. As punishment, the Prince of Darkness inscribed his own symbol on the Minotaur's Lord's brow with the nails of his index finger, and imprisoned him in a maze so cunningly crafted that Asmodeus declared it unsol unsolvable. However, cunning Baphomet not only solved the maze, but also stole the labyrinth itself from hell, 
taking him with him when he returned to the abyss. Turning far thinner but much wiser, Baphomet claimed this new realm for himself and with this act established himself as a demon lord. His domains are animal, chaos, evil, and strength. His favorite weapon is the glaive. And if you play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you're going to see his markings influence the world early on in the game. Next, we have Descari. An alignment of chaotic neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Descari, demon lord of infestation and locust, is said to be the usher of the apocalypse. Being a child of two demons, Pazuzu and an unnamed giant insect, insect demon, Descari disdains the other demon lords who originated as mortals and respects those that predated mortal sins or those that were once Leapoth lords. Descari's cult is most powerful in the lands that once made up the realms of Sarkoris. Outside of the world wound, his cults have spread into other northern nations, infected, infecting the nearby lands of Mendev, Numeria, and Brevoi. Many of the Scarius cultists worship him in the hope of being rewarded when he takes over the world, but the Scari sees them as no more than pawns. The smart cultists that realize his graph, uh, graph demonic flesh onto themselves or sell their souls so they would become demons after death. His domains are chaos, destruction, evil, and war, and his favorite weapon is the scythe. Now, D uh, Descari does play a major role in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Now, minor spoiler award, uh, alert incoming in 3, 2, 1. Uh, you will be seeing him face to face within the first five minutes or so of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. He's quite a sight to behold. So definitely a major role in this game. Next, we have Cabriri. Alignments of Chaotic Neutral, Neutral Evil, Chaotic Evil. The carry-on stench Cabriri, him who gnaws, is the demon lord of ghouls, graves, and sec secrets kept by the dead. According to legend, Cabriri is the reborn form of the first human to devour his kin in life. Cabriri is predominantly worshipped by the cannibalistic ghouls that dwell in the hidden warrens beneath Galarian's surface. His followers enact bloody rituals in his honor beneath the gibbous moon, dancing and feasting beneath the night sky. His domains are death, chaos, evil, knowledge, and his favorite weapon is the flail. Next, we have Knight Commander, Lord of Death. Alignments of lawful, neutral, neutral, lawful, evil, and neutral evil. Leaders of a small cult of undead, created by his own hands, Knight Commander, or leader, uh, became famous as the indomitable commander of the fifth Mendevian crusade against the world wound. Determined to destroy the forces of the abyss at any cost, he ventured a path of the Lord of Death. For millennia, powerful necromancers have dreaded, dreamed of a power that could rival the divine. They have created cults in their own names and attracted many followers. Thanks to his legendary powers, Knight Commander has managed to achieve much greater success than the others. He has acquired a talent bestow and define spells upon his followers. From that moment, the undead created by him needed no other deities to call, cast spells. His domains are death, evil, strength, and war, and apparently does not have a favored weapon or it is missing. Finally, we have Pulura, with an alignment of chaotic neutral, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. Pulura, the mistress of the stars and the and the Aurora is an angel imperial lord, the patron of those travelers that become homesick, lost, or injured in the snowy wastes of the far north. She often appears dancing amid the Aurora Borealis in the skies of far northern lands. Legend has it that her extraordinary beauty will burn away mortals who dare approach her too closely. Pelora is worshipped by denizens of the far north who believe that the Aurora is an omen of her good deeds, sailors worship her at the keeper, as the keeper of the constellations which mortals navigate their world, lighting the way so that those who travel or explore can always find their way home. She was also worshipped as a major deity in the lost Kelid realms of Sarkos Sarkoris before it fell to the demons of the world wound. Her domains are that of air, good, chaos, and weather. 
Her favorite weapon is the sling staff. Now that makes all of the deity choices. Now as we move on to take a look at the domains, I want to point out the requirements for choosing a domain or having access to a domain. First, obviously you need to have a class that has that feature, like the cleric. Next, you need to meet this specific alignment. In my this character creation, you'll notice these here, I could technically choose an example, but not these because I don't necessarily meet all the requirements. So you gotta have those requirements, and once you meet, uh, meet that god's requirements, you will unlock the ability to choose the listed domains as one of your choices. So in this case, um, darkness, death, destruction, evil, and law. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the options for all the domains, one by one. So in this case, based on my deity choice, these are these are the first uh, domains that I can choose. But again, I will be going over all of them one by one. We'll start with the Earth domain. You have mastery over Earth, metal, and stone. Can fire darts of acid and command Earth creatures. Now each domain will give you one or two special abilities, active and or passive, and also domain spells that you will get again access to as you level up. So in this case, you get Acid Dart. Standard action, you can unleash an Acid Dart targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. It's going to deal 1d6 points of Acid Damage plus 1 point for every 2 levels you possess in the class that gave you access to the domain. You can use it 3 plus your Wisdom modifier amounts of time a day. Also, you gain Acid Resistance. So at 6th level, you get Resist Acid 10. Increases to 20 at 12th, which basically means a 12th level Whenever you take acid damage, the very the first 20 points you would take is uh, taken away with each case of taking damage of acid damage, and at 20th you become immune to acid. Now domain spells are Stone Fist, Acid Arrow, Soothing Mud, Spike Stone, Acid Spray, Stone Wall, Elemental Volley, Body for Earth, Hard Wilting, and Elemental Swarm Earth that you will again unlock as you level up. Next you have Law, Do Law Domain. So, you follow a strict and ordered code of law, and in so doing, achieve alignment. You gain touch a law, you can touch a willing creature as a standard action, you infuse it with power of divine order, allow it to treat all, oops, allows you to treat all attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, and saving throws for one round, as if a natural d20 roll the result of 11. You can use this ability number of times per day, equal to 3 plus your wisdom modifier. So it'll basically let you get a predictive outcome of um, a check or a roll. So if you know you're going to be able to pass on an 11, um, it, this is a guaranteed success. Staff of Order. 8th level, you can give a weapon you touch the axiomatic special weapon quality for a number of rounds, equal to half your level in a class that gave you access to this domain. I don't remember what axiomatic means. I don't know if it it's similar to where you can use multiple. I I don't want to say it wrong. I don't know if anybody that's watching this, if you can leave in the comments, uh, what this specifically does. I know it's pretty good, <laughs> uh, but other than that, unfortunately, I don't off the top of my head know the effect. It's gonna last um, a number of rounds, half your level, and a class that gave you extra domain. Then you can use the ability once per day at 8th level, an additional time per day for every 4 levels beyond 8th. Um, and then your domain spells are protection from chaos, and then a communal version of that, uh, which is basically AoE. Uh, you're going to get prayer, protection from energy, communal, dominate person, um, blade barrier, dic dic dictum, diction, shield the law, dom and dominate monster. Next, we have the nobility domain. You are a great leader, an inspiration to all who follow the teachings of your faith. You gain access to inspiring word, so a standard action, you can speak an inspiring word to creatures within 30 feet. Creatures receive a plus 2 morale bonus on attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, and saving throws. Number rounds of half your level in a class that gave you access to the domain minimum 1. 
can use it basically three plus your wisdom modifier amounts per day. You also get inspiring command at eighth level. You can issue an inspiring command to your allies who must all be within 30 feet of you. They get plus two inside bonus on attack rolls, AC, combat maneuver, defense, and basically CMD. Uh, and skill checks for a number of rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to the main. So that's going to be, a, a, it looks like a common duration calculation. This is a language dependent mind affecting effect. You can use this power a number of times per day equal to 3 plus your wisdom modifier. What this means is, uh, this is implying. I believe also is if you are mute for some reason or the other people can't hear you like they're deafened uh, this would not take uh, it would not stick uh, domain spells are divine favor grace magical vestment heroism dominate person brilliant inspiration heroism uh, greater rightful aspect and overwhelming presence next we have the protection domain your faith is your greatest source of protection you can use that faith to defend others. In addition, you receive plus one resistance bonus on saving throws. Bonus increases by one for every five levels you possess in the class that gave you the access to this domain. That's big. Uh, that's pretty good. Resistance bonus. Uh, that seems like all your saving throws. So that's great. Uh, resistant touch. Standard action. You can touch an ally and grant them your resistance bonus for one minute. When you lose it, use it, you lose your resistance bonus granted by the protection domain for one minute. So you're basically transferring it to them. And a normal equation for day use, again, 3 plus was the modifier. Aura protection. At 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot aura of protection. Number rounds per day equal to your level in the class that you gave you the domain. You and your allies within this aura gain plus 1 deflection bonus to AC and resistance 5 against all elements. Uh, acid, cold, electric, fire, and sonic. I want to point out every time this says um, equal rounds, uh, number of rounds equal to the level in the class that gave you the access to this domain. This is important because let's say you're a level five cleric, but then you multi-class and you're a fighter for 10 levels. You're technically level 15, but this is not going to give you 15 rounds. It's only going to give you five rounds uh, because it's five levels of the class that gave you um, access to domain, which would be cleric. So just to clarify. So the deflection bonus increases by plus one for every four levels you possess in the class. Gave you access to the domain beyond eighth level. And at 14th level, resistance against all elements increases to 10. The rounds do not need to be consecutive. So really nice defensive aura. Domain spells are protection from alignment. Bark skin protection from energy. Communal version of protection of energy. Spell resistance. Stone skin. Communal. Restoration. Greater restoration. Protection from spells and sea mantle. Next, we have the travel domain. You're an explorer and find enlightenment in the simple joy of travel, be it by foot or conveyance of magic. Increase your base speed by 10. This is pretty awesome, uh, especially since it should stack of other movement uh, increasing effects. Agile feet. As a free action, you can gain increased mobility for one round. For next round, you ignore all difficult terrain and do not take any penalties for moving through it. And you can use it for the normal duration equation that we've been discussing. Dimensional hop at 8th level. You can teleport up to 10 feet per level in the class that gave you access to the domain per level as move action. It uh, can be used in 5 foot increments and such movement does not provoke attacks of opportunity. That's pretty big too. Domain spells are long strider, grace, Feather step, mass, mass feather step, dimension door, uh, the mass dimensional door, break enchantment, elemental body three air, summon greater elemental, protection from spells, and elemental swarm air. Next we have the air domain. You can manipulate lightning, mist, and wind, and are resistant to electrical damage. You get lightning arc. Standard action, you can unleash an arc of electricity targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. This arc of electricity deals 1d6 point of electricity damage, plus 1 point for every 2 levels you possess in the class that gave you access to the domain. You can again use it equal amount of times of 3 plus your wisdom modifier a day. Gain electricity resistance starting at level 6 that gives you resist electricity 10. Increases to 20 at 12th and at 20th level you gain immunity to electricity. 
Your domain spells are Shocking Grasp, Protection from Allos, Arrows, Lightning Bolt, Shout, Cloud Kill, Chain Lightning, Elemental Body for Air, Shout, a Greater Shout, and Elemental Swarm Air. Next we got the Animal Domain. You can speak with and befriend animals with ease. In addition, you treat lore nature as a class skill. You gain an animal companion. Fourth level, you gain the service of an animal companion. Your effective druid level for this animal companion is equal to your druid level, the class that gave you access to the domain. Druids who take this ability through their nature bond class feature use their druid level minus three to determine the ability of their animal companion. Now this is important because druids, they have a choice of an animal companion or a domain. This keeps individuals from saying, oh, I'm just going to take animal domain and they get the pet plus all these domain spells. This makes you choose. Do you want uh, the animal companion at full power or do you want the weaker, so minus uh, three levels lower, weaker, uh, animal companion plus the domain spells, which include magic fang, hold animal, dominate animal, summon nature's ally four, B shape three, summon nature's allies six, summon nature's ally seven, summon natural allies eight, as well as summon nature's ally nine, which is the highest level of summon nature ally. Next, we have the artifice domain. You can repair damage to objects, animate objects with life, and create objects from nothing. You get Aura of Efficiency. You can emit a 30 foot radius aura that grants your allies a plus four bonus on all saving throws against effects, inflict the fatigued or exhausted condition. You can use this aura for a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class giving you access to it. Rounds do not need to be consecutive. You, the, you also get Aura of Efficiency Damage Resistance. At eight level, your Aura of Efficiency, so it upgrades, Grants you allies damage reduction one. So damage reduction one of this little line here, to the best of my understanding, basically means it's against everything. So there is no way to bypass. It's the, the highest form of damage reduction. This DR increases by plus one for every three levels you possess. The class that gave you access to domain beyond eighth level. So that can get pretty nice. Um, domain spells are lead blades, effortless armor, Magical Vestment, Restoration, Wave of Fatigue, Disintegrate, Wave of Exhaustion, Protection from Spells, and Clashing Rocks. Next, we have the Chaos Domain. Your touch infuses life and weapons with chaos, and you revel in all things anar uh, anar anarchic. anarchic. Wow, okay. Touch of Chaos. You can imbue a target with chaos as a melee touch attack. For next round, any time the target rolls a d20, you must roll twice and take the less favored result, so disadvantage. And you can use it again three plus your wisdom modifier times. Chaos Blade. At 8th level, you can give weapons you touch the anarch anarchic special weapon quality. Number of rounds equal to half your level in the class. They give you the domain. You can use this ability once a day at 8th, additional time per day for every four levels afterwards, so at 12, 16, and 20. Domain spells are protect from law, protect from law, communal, dispel magic, freedom of movement, acidic spray, banshee blast, word of chaos, cloak of chaos, and summon monster nine. Next we have charm domain. You can baffle and befuddle foes of a touch of a or a smile, and your beauty and grace are divine. You gain dazzling touch. You can cause a living creature to become dazed for one round. This is a melee touch attack. Creatures with more hit dice than your level and the class that gave you access to domain are unaffected. So this is, will not work on bosses or high level um, monsters um, unless you're like over out leveling the content at which point it doesn't really matter. You can use it again in a, a number of time of 3 plus your wisdom modifier. Charming Smile at 8th level you can cast Charm Person as a swift action. A DC of 10 plus half your level, a class you gave your access to this domain plus your wisdom modifier. Effective charm person lasts for one round. You can use this ability a number of times per day equal to your casting level. Now, 
This is a very short charm. I don't see how useful this is. I guess it's a good way if they're in the middle of casting, it'll kind of interrupt it uh, before they start doing what they were going to do. Uh, domain person. Hyp hypnotism. Um, hideous laughter. Deep slumber. Rainbow pattern. Dominate person. Ego splendor. Um, mass insanity. Oops. Uh, mass insanity, euphoric tranquility, and dominate monster. Next, we have community domain. Touch can heal wounds, and your presence instills unity and strength emotional bonds. So we start with calming touch. And touch a creature as a standard action. Heal it for 1d6 point damage plus 1 point per class level that gave you the access to the domain. This touch also removes the fatigued, shaken, and sickened conditions, but has no effect on more severe conditions. You can use it 3 plus wisdom time, uh, wisdom modifier times a day. Also get Guarded Hearth. 8th level, you can create a ward that protects a specified area. Creating this ward is a full round action. All friendly creatures in the area receive a sacred bonus equal to your wisdom modifier. All saving throws and attack rolls while inside a warded area. Last for one hour per level in a class that gives you access to domain. You can use this ability once per day. So the usefulness will completely depend on how big that area is. So if you're in a big boss fight or a big mob fight and this is a big enough area where you can move around, it'd be really useful. Or if you have a bunch of ranged characters, you can make this useful as well. Domain spells. Bless. Protection from, your, from alignment. Communal. Prayer. Protection from energy. Communal. Burst of Glory, Stone Skin Communal, Restoration, Greater Restoration, Legendary Proportions, and Mass Heal. So pretty powerful domain spells. Darkness Domain. You manipulate shadows and darkness. You gain Touch of Darkness, so as a melee touch attack, you can cause a creature's vision to be fraught with shadows and darkness. Creatures touch... Uh, the creature's touch treat all other creatures as they had concealment, suffering 20% mischance on all attack rolls. The last number of rounds of equal half your level in a class that gave you access, access to this domain. Minimum 1. You can use it basically 3 plus your wisdom modifier times a day. You also get Moonfire. So at 8th level you get a standard action. You can shoot a blast of divine moonlight from your eyes as a ranged touch attack against a single target within 30 feet. Moonlight deals 1d8 points of damage per two levels in the class that gave you access to the domain. And target is dazed for one round per level in the class that gave you access to the domain. He deals 1d10 points of damage per level in the class that gave you access to the domain against Linkrof... Linkrof... So, werewolves. You can use this ability once per day at 8th level. Additional time per day every four levels beyond 8th. So domain spells are Sleep, Blindness, Vampiric Touch, Enervation, Mind Fog, Umbral Strike, Power Blind, Sh Greater Shadow Evocation, and Polar Midnight. Next we have the Death Domain. You can cause the living to bleed at a touch and find comfort in the presence of the dead. You gain Bleeding Touch and Melee Touch Attack. You can cause a living creature to take 1d6 point of damage per round. It persists for number rounds for one half your level in the class that gave you the access to the domain, minimum one. And you can use it three plus your wisdom modifier times per day. You also get Death's Embrace. At eighth level, you heal damage instead of taking damage from channel negative energy. If the channel negative energy target is undead, you heal hit points just like undead in the area. If you are undead, then you instead do not take damage from positive energy. So this is kind of nice. You get the best of both worlds. You heal from negative and you do not take damage from positive. The main spells are cause fear, bone shaker, bestow curse, enervation, slay living, circle of death, destruction, horde, wilt, wilting, and the whale of the banshee. Next we have the destruction domain. So you revel in ruin and devastation and can deliver particularly destructive attacks. You gain destructive smites. You gain the supernatural ability to make a melee attack with a morale bonus of damage roll equal to half your level in the class that give you access to the domain, minimum 1. So that will max out at 10. 
destruction aura. Eighth level, you can emit a 30-foot aura of destruction for a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave it access to domain. All attacks made against targets in this aura, including you, gain a morale bonus on damage equal to one half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain, and all critical threats are automatically confirmed. These rounds do not need to be consecutive. Domain spells are True Strike, Bone Shaker, Rage, Fear, Bone Shatter, Harm, Disintegrate, Hor Horrid Wilting, and Tsunami. Next we got the Evil Domain. You are a sinister and cruel and have wholly pledged your soul to the cause of evil. You get Touch of Evil, so you can cause creatures to become sickened as a melee touch attack. Creatures sickened by your touch count as good for the purpose of spells of the Evil Descriptor. The ability lasts for a number of rounds of one half your level in the class that give you access to the domain. You can use it 3 plus your wisdom modifier times per day. You also get Scythe of Evil. At 8th level you can give a weapon touched the unholy special weapon quality for a number of rounds equal to one half your level in a class that gave you access to this domain. You can use this ability once per day at 8th level and an additional time per day for every 4 levels beyond 8th. The domains here are domain spells are Ray of Sickling, Sickening, Bone Shaker, Contagion, Fear, Slay Living, Create Undead, Blasphemy, Unholy Aura, and Summon Monster 9. Next we have the Fire Domain. You can call for fire, command creatures of the Inferno, and your fresh does not burn. You get Fire Bolt. As standard actions, you can unleash Scorching Bolt of Fire or Divine Fire from your outstretched hand. You can target a single foe within 30 feet at a ranged touch attack with this Bolt of Fire. If you hit the foe, Fire Bolt deals 1d6 points of fire damage, plus 1 point for every 2 levels you possess in the class that gave you access to this domain. You can use this ability a number of times per day equal to 3 plus your Wisdom modifier. You gain Fire Resistances, so at 6th level, gain fire resist 10 at 12th level you gain fire resistance 20 and at 20th level you become immune to fire damage your domain spells are burning hands scorching ray fireball controlled fireball flame strike summon huge fire mental elemental body for fire and summon elder fire mental as well as fiery body next you have glory domain Infuse the glory of the divine and are a true foe of the undead. In addition, when you channel positive energy to harm undead creatures, the save DC to have the damage is increased by 2. So it just makes it harder for them to resist the damage. You get Touch of Glory. You can cause your hand to shimmer with divine radiance, allowing you to touch the creature as a standard action. Give it a bonus equal to your level in the class that gave it access to the domain. On a single charisma based skill check or charisma ability check. Build lasts for one hour until the creature touched applies the bonus to roll. You can use this three times plus wisdom modifiers a day. So a bit situational, uh, but could be useful. And an arrow of heroism. At eighth level, you can emit a 30 foot aura of heroism for a number of rounds per day, equal to your level and a class that gave you access to this domain. Using this ability as swift action, allies in the area are treated as if they were under the effect of heroism spell. Now that's powerful. I believe heroism gives you uh, bonuses to like attack and some other elements. Um, really, really powerful. So kind of underwhelming first ability. Really nice uh, aura effect. Uh, domain spells are Shield of Faith, Blessed Weapon, Searing Light, Divine Power, Burst of Glory. Inspiring Recovery, Holy Sword, Holy Aura, and Overwhelming Presence. Next, you got the Good Domain. If pledge your life and soul to goodness and purity, you get Touch a Good. You can touch a creature as a standard action. Again, a sacred bonus on our attack rolls. Skill checks, ability checks, and saving throws equal to half your level. The class that gave you access to the domain. Minimum of one for one round. You can use this ability number times of three plus your wisdom modifier times a day. Again, um, good as you level up. At first, it's a... Uh, well, the problem is it's only for one round. So, situational. Depending on if everybody's attacking simultaneously for that round or mid-combat against the boss, 
you can try and spam this for a couple rounds straight to try and protect and buff yourself but um, obviously as you get higher level this becomes more useful you want to make sure you have really high wisdom modifier for this holy lance at eighth level can give a weapon you touch the holy special weapon quality for a number of rounds equal to one half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain Use this ability once per day at 8th level and an additional time per day for every 4 levels beyond 8th. Your domain spells are protection from evil, protection from evil communal, prayer, force repentance, burst of glory, summon monster 6, holy word, holy aura, and monster summon 9. Next we have the healing domain and they keep coming as you can see here. You touch staves of uh, your touch staves off pain and death, and your healing magic is particularly vital and potent. You get rebuke death. You can touch a living creature as a standard action, healing it for 1d4 points of damage, plus 1 for every 2 levels you possess in the class that gave you the, uh, access to the domain. You can only use this ability on a creature that is below 0 hit points. You can use it 3 plus wisdom modifier times a day. You also get healer's blessing. 6th level, all of your cure spells are treated as if they were empowered. Increasing the amount of damage healed by 50%. That's amazing. Does not apply to damage dealt to undead with a cure spell. Does not stick with empowered spell meta um, magic feat. But that's okay because then you can apply other meta magic feats to this. Oops. Domain spells are remove sickness, restora lesser restoration, cure serious wounds, neutralize poison, breath of life, heal. Greater Restoration, Protection from Spells, and Mass Heal. So, quite potent. Next, we got the Knowledge Domain. You are a Scholar and a Sage of Legends. In addition, you treat all knowledge and lore skills as class skills. You gain Void Form. You can become semi-tangible as a standard action. While this form, you are immune to critical hits and gain plus one deflection bonus to AC. Bonus is increased by one at eighth level. And every four levels does after. You can use this power a number of rounds per day equal to your level and a class that give you access to this domain. So situationally can make you quite defensive. Uh, it's a deflection bonus, so you get that you can get that in numerous ways. Being immune to crits is real nice though. And then you get teaching moment. At eighth level, you get a swift action. You can grant all allies within 30 feet special insight. Once during the next minute, each affected creature can choose to roll twice. And take the better result before attempting an attack roll, ability ch check, skill check, or saving throw. I am going to guess this is automatic just if they're in the middle of attacking or defending or whatever me, maybe, or doing some sort of check, it will apply to the next one. I don't think it will let you micro this further than that. You can use this ability once per day at 8th and an additional time per day for every 4 level afterwards. Uh, domain spells are True Strike, Fox is Cunning, Sea Invisibility. Communal, uh, Death Ward, True Seeing, Fox is Cunning, or Max, f a Mask, uh, Fox is Cunning, uh, Power Word Blind, Power Word Stun, and Power Word Skill. Now, I'm not really sure the difference when they're talking about Communal versus Mass, but in general, it's going to affect your whole party. I think with some of these, it may be how it's cast. Uh, it may be just one of them may be affecting everybody automatically. The other ones, you may... And you may have to like group everybody up when you cast it to make sure that you hit everybody. Could be wrong there. Feel free to correct me in the comments below. Uh, but I did notice, you know, there's that the wording of mass or communal. General, they both imply that multiple people will be impacted by it with no limit. All right, so that was knowledge. Now we got liberation domain. You are spirit of freedom and a st staunch foe against all who would enslave and oppress. You have the ability to ignore imp impediments to your mobility. For a number of rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave you access to the domain, you can move normally regardless of magical effects that impede movement. As if you were affected by freedom of movement. That's pretty powerful. Effect occurs automatically as soon as it applies. These rounds do not need to be consecutive. You also get Freedom's Call. If level, you emit a 30-foot aura of freedom for a number of rounds per day equal to level in the class that gave you access to the domain. Allies with this are, are not affected by difficult terrain or confusion, frightened, panic, paralyzed, slowed, shaken, or static conditions. That's pretty extensive and amazing. 
Aura only suppresses these effects, and they return once a creature leaves the aura, when their aura ends if applicable. The rounds do not need to be consecutive. So, in fights or situations where this effect happens a lot, this can really, really save your skin. Domain spells are remove fear, remove paralysis, remove curse, freedom of movement, break enchantment, dispel magic, greater, uh, greater dispel magic, elemental body 4, mind blank, uh, and communal mind blank. So quite literally, uh, very liberating. Next we got the luck domain. You're infused with luck and your mere presence can spread your good fortune. You get a bit of luck. You can touch a willing creature as a standard action. Given a bit of luck, next round, anytime target rolls a d20, she may roll twice and take the better result, so basically advantage. You can use it 3 plus your wisdom modifier times a day. You also get divine fortune. Six level standard action, you can bless yourself with divine luck. Next, for the next half your level in class, they give you the access to the main rounds. You roll two times on d20 and pick the best, so you basically get... That advantage for a half your level, so if you're level 10 for 5 rounds, etc. You can use the ability once per day, 6 level, and 1 additional time per day for every 6 levels in this class. They give you the access to the domain beyond 6 levels, so not quite, can't use it quite as often as some of the other ones that are every 4, but it's still pretty good. Domain spells are True Strike, Aid, Protect from Evil Energy, Protection from Energy Communal, which is great, Break Enchantment, Cat's Grace, Ma mass cat's grace so uh dex mass dex buffs greater restoration euphoric tranquility and mass heal so really really nice domain spells here next we get the madness domain you embrace the madness that lurks deep in your heart and can leash it to drive your foes insane or to sacrifice uh, certain abilities to hone others you get vision of madness you can give a creature a vision of madness as a melee touch attack Choose one of the following. Attack roll, saving thrower, skill check. Receive a bonus to the chosen rolls equal to one half your level. Class that gave you access to the domain. Uh, minimum plus one. And a penalty to the other two types rolled to equal, equal half the level. Uh, of the class that gave access to this domain, which is minimum minus one. This effect fades after three rounds. You can use this ability number of times of three plus window, was the modifier day. So there's a, it's a buff, but also a sacrifice, so cuts both ways. And an aura of madness, 8th level, you can emit a 30-foot aura of madness for number rounds per day equal to your level in the class that gave you the domain. Enemies within the aura are affected by confusion. Unless they make a will save throw of DC equal to 10 plus half your level in the class, they give you access to the domain plus your wisdom modifier. Confusion effect ends immediately when a creature leaves the area of the aura the area or the aura expires. If they save on it, uh, they are immune to it for 24 hours. And the domain spells are Cause Fear, Cacophonous Call, Rage, Confusion, Feeble Mind, Phantasmal Killer, Insanity, Frightful Aspect, and Weird. Next we got Magical Domain. You are the true student of all things mystical and see divinity and the purity of magic. Um, Get the hand of the acolyte. You can cause your melee weapon to fly from your grasp and strike a foe before instantly returning. Standard action: you can make single attack using a melee weapon at a range of 30 feet. Treat it as a ranged attack with a throw with a thrown weapon, except that you'd add your wisdom modifier to attack roll instead of dexterity modifier. Damage still relies on strength. This ability cannot be used to perform a combat maneuver. You can use the ability. 3 plus wisdom modifier times a day. Also get the spelling touch, 8th level. Get a target that's the spell magic effect as a melee touch attack. You can use it once per day, 8th level, and one additional time every 4th levels afterwards. Uh, domain spells, color spray, resist energy, dispel magic, protection from energy communal, spell resistance, dispel magic, great, uh, greater dispel magic, Power or blind, protection from spells, and cackling rocks, or clashing rocks. Cackling rocks would be funny. Next, we got the plant domain. You find a solace in the green, can grow defensive thorns, and can communicate with plants. You get enlarge. So, a swift action, you can enlarge yourself for one round. 
So if you were to target a large person spell, use a 3 plus wisdom modifier times day. A little underwhelming. A lot of underwhelming. Bramble armor, 6th level. You can cause a host of wooden thorns to burst from your skin as a free action. While bramble armor is effective, any foe striking you with a melee weapon without reach takes 1d6 point of piercing damage plus 1 point per 2 levels you possess in a class that gave you the access domain. You can use this ability, number of rounds per day, equal to your level in the class that gave you access to domain. Rounds do not need to be consecutive, so that's okay. Uh, domain spell, entangle, bark skin, contagion, thorny body, bite trap, B shape 4, shambling mound, chain staff, mind blank, and mind blank communal. Next, we got repose domain. You see, death not as something to be feared, but as a final rest and reward for a life well spent. Taint of undeath is a mockery of what you hold dear. Get gentle rest. Touch can fill a creature with lethargy, causing a living creature to become staggered for one round as a melee touch attack. If you touch a staggered living creature, the creature falls asleep for one round instead. Under creature touch or staggered for a number of rounds equal to your wisdom modifier. You can use a, th a number of 3 plus wisdom modifier times a day. You get ward against death at 8th level. You can emit a 30 foot aura that wards against death for a number of rounds per day equal to your li level and the class that you gave your access to this domain. Living creatures in this area are immune to all death effects, energy drain, and effects that cause negative end levels. This ward does not remove negative levels that a creature has already gained, but the negative levels have no effect while the creature is instead is inside the warden area. These rounds do not need to be consecutive. Domain spells are Doom, Scare, Vampiric Touch, Death Word, Slay Living, Undeath to Death, Destruction, Wave of Exhaustion, and on Whale of the Banshee. Next we got Rune Domain. In Strange and Eldric Runes, you find potent magic. First you get a Blast Rune. As a standard action, you can create a Blast Rune in a desired location. Any creature entering 5 foot area on the rune takes 1d6 point damage plus 1. For every 2 levels you possess in the class, it gave you the access to domain. So this is basically a mine that you create. It does either cold or acid, cold, electric, or fire damage decided when you create the rune. Last number of rounds is equal to your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. And you can use it 3 plus your wisdom modifier times again a day. You also get a warding rune. Eighth level you can create a warding rune in a desired location. Any creature entering a 5 foot area around the rune must make a will save or they will not be able to attack for number or rounds equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to the domain. Rune last number of rounds equal to your level in the class that gave you the access to the domain. And you can use it once per day at 8th and then an extra time every 4 levels after 8th. Domain spells are protection from alignment, protection from arrows, protection from arrows communal, protection from energy communal, spell resistance, dispel magic, greater dispel magic, power word blind, power word stun, and power word kill. Next we got the strength and domain. In Strength and Brawn, there is Truth. Your faith gives you incredible might and power. First, you get Strength Surge. As a standard action, you can touch a creature to give it great strength. For one round, a target gains an enhancement bonus equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to the domain. Minimum plus one. Um, two attacks, melee attacks, and athletic checks. You can use this ability 3 plus your Wisdom modifier times a day. <clears throat> You also get Might of the Gods. At 8th level, you gain add half of your level in class to give you access to this domain as an enhancement bonus to your athletic check. Your domain spells are Enlarged Person, Bull Strength, Magical Vestment, enlarged per Mass Enlarged Person, Righteous Might, Stoneskin, Legendary Proportions, Frightful Aspect, and Transformation. Next, you got Sun Domain. You see truth in the pure and burning light of the sun and you call upon its blessing of wrath to work great deeds. So you get Sun's Blessing whenever you channel positive energy to harm undead creatures, add your level and a class that gave you access to this domain to the damage dealt. Undead do not add their channel resistance to their saves when you channel positive energy. So this is really good for min-maxing anti-death potential right here. Nimbus of Light is the next thing you get. At 8th level, you emit a 30-foot Nimbus of Light for a number of rounds 
per day equal to your level in the class that gave you access to the domain. Any hostile creature within the radius must succeed a fortitude save to resist the effect of the aura. If the creature fails, it is blinded until it leaves the area of the spell. If they resist it, they cannot be affected again by this particular aura. Undead within the radius take an amount of damage equal to your level in the class that gave you the air access to the domain each round that they remain inside the Nimbus. Now the domain spells are Fairy Fire, Sea Invisibility, Searing Light, Shield of Dawn, Flame Strike, Chain of Light, Chains of Light, Sunbeam, Sunburst, and Elemental Swarm Fire. Next we get the Trickery Domain. You are a master of illusions and deceptions. Trickery and stealths are class skills. You get Copycat. You can create an illusionary double of yourself as a move action. This double functions as a single mirror image and lasts for a number of rounds equal to your level in the class that gave you access to the domain or until the illusionary duplicate is dispelled or destroyed. You can have no more than one copycat at a time. This ability does not stack with mirror image spell and you can use it three times plus your wisdom modifier per day. So pretty cool actually. Uh, especially since normally you need like a wizard or sorcerer to get uh, this kind of uh, the mirror image spell. So it's uh, as a cleric uh, or other classes that can use this. Um, it's it's a nice protective spell to have. Also get Master's Illusion. On 8th level you can make yourself and any number of allies within 30 feet invisible for one round per level in the class that gave you access to this domain. Rounds do not need to be consecutive. So I'm curious. I guess you just toggle it and it counts down because you wouldn't want to have to select it each turn uh, or each round, but good if you want to mass sneak by, uh, by some enemies, for example. And domain spells are sleep, invisibility, dispel magic, confusion, mind fog, look of dreams, insanity, mass invisibility, which is great, and weird. That's weird. Okay, and uh, next we have war domain. You are a crusader for your god, always ready and willing to fight Defend your faith. Look at this. This one's simple and sweet. Looks like there's only one ability you get, so I don't know if it's missing one or they're only giving it one. You can battle rage. You can touch a creature as a standard action to give it a bonus of melee damage rolls equal to half your level and a class that gave you access to the domain for one round. You can use it 3 plus your wisdom modifier times a day. It just seems like it should have a second thing. Maybe it's just not implemented. So do note, this may or may not be... Uh, complete. Your domain spells are Bless, Aid, Magical Vestment, Divine Power, Flame Strike, Blade Barrier, Power Word Blind, Power Word Sun, and well, Power Word Stun, and Power Word Kill. Alright, penultimate domain is the Water Domain. You can manipulate water and mist and uh, water and mist and ice, conjure creatures of water, and resist cold. First you get Icicle. As a standard action, you can fire an icicle from your fingers targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. Icicle deals 1d6 point of dam cold damage plus 1 point for every 2 levels you possess in the class that gave you access to the domain. And again, you can use a 3 plus wisdom modifier times a day. You get cold resistances starting at 6th level uh, using getting cold resist 10. Then it goes up to uh, resist cold resist 20 at level 12. And you get full immunity from old cold damage at level 20. Your domain spells are Ray of Sickening, Acid Arrow, Stinking Cloud, Freedom of Movement, Ice Storm, Cone of Cold, Elemental Body for Water, Horrid Wilting, and Tsunami. And last but not least, we have the Weather Domain. With the power over storm and sky, you can call down wrath of the gods upon the world below. You can Role plays Zeus, you know, God of Thunder, whatever you like, ultimate power. And you get Storm Burst, standard action. You can create a Storm Burst targeting any foe, uh, foe within 30 feet as a range touch attack. Storm Burst deals 1d6 point of damage, plus 1 point for every 2 levels you possess in the class that give you the extra domain. In addition, target is buffeted by winds and rain doesn't take to minus two penalty on attack rolls for one round it's actually kind of nice and you can uh, you can use it for three rounds plus your wisdom modifiers a day 
You also get Lightning Rod at 8th level. As a swift action, you can call down a bolt of lightning. You can call down a bolt of lightning a number of times per day equal to your level in the class. Give you access to the domain. Otherwise, it works just like Call Lightning. Domain spells are Snowball, Summon Small Elemental, Call Lightning, Slowing Mud, Ice Storm, Sirocco, Firestorm, Sunburst, and Tsunami. And clearly, Snowball is by far the most powerful spell here. Alright guys, before I completely lose my voice here, uh, that finishes the list of the deities and domains currently in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. This is still the beta strain, so some things may be updated uh, like that. For example, uh, the War Domains looks a little suspicious since it's the only one that only had one ability. Uh, so uh, we shall see if any updates are made. But for the time being, this should get you guys all set. I hope you guys like this content. If you like it, if you find it helpful, again, like, subscribe. Other than that, till next time, guys, it's Leroy from Leroy Gaming. I will see you guys next time.